Hi all, uh, Sky Trent here, and today I want to do a quick drive-by of three art periods, the Renaissance, uh, Baroque, and Rococo. And uh, I will be referencing the textbook so you can follow along with me there if you want, uh, just to see images, and uh, then just talking about some quick notes. This will be, when I say a drive-by, just really quick introduction. I want to give you the information that uh, helps you with the final exam and also with the quiz that's required this week. So uh, the first art period we're going to talk about is uh, the Renaissance, and the Renaissance lasted from 1330 to 1527. And the statement that I use to associate or to give you insight, the most insight into this art period, is it's an alignment of ideas of learning, reason, and self-expression with religious dogma. And is what that means is that uh, humanity was starting to awaken. It was called the Enlightenment period. And um, so man was starting to develop their own identity and look at the world from their perspective and separate themselves from the church a little bit. But they were still very much influenced uh, by the church. And so <clears throat> when you talk about alignment of ideas of learning, reason, and self-expression with religious dogma, they were still heavily influenced by the church. As a matter of fact, the church is probably the reason that we have much of the uh, art that we still have from the Renaissance because they commissioned most of the work, they kept it, they kept it safe and secured over uh, thousands of years so that we can uh, still, or hundreds of years in this case, so that we can still uh, appreciate the art. It also, uh, when you think of the influence, it dictates what the subject matter is and what the art looks like. So <clears throat> in this case, the Catholic Church was very um, influential uh, as far as dominating the art that we see. But uh, there also was a, a family called the Medici family, which was very influential in the art that we see. Now, although they were a, a family that was uh, <clears throat> a business-oriented family, not religious, they still, one of the Medici family members was a pope. Uh, actually, Pope um, Leo X uh, was the son of uh, Lorenzo di Medici. And so they still were very connected to the church, but would uh, allow just a little bit of latitude in the subject matter and what we might see. Um, <clears throat> some of the dominant characteristics during the art period, <clears throat> and matter of fact, you can kind of see this. If you look on in, in your workbook, the Renaissance starts on page 279, and on page 280, uh, we have a painting in the top left-hand corner where you can see that uh, the perspective there seems flat. You don't have a really accurate perspective depth. Matter of fact, uh, one of the ways I describe it is during the Renaissance, the artist started thinking about the human body. And actually, Leonardo da Vinci is known for dissecting bodies to get an idea of the bone structure and the muscle structure to get it accurately. So artists start thinking of the body and clothes placed on the bodies, what that would look like to accurately represent it. Where you can see in this painting on the top of page 280, uh, where the clothes still make up the body. You can't really see that. Even on page 281 next to that, the Holy Trinity, uh, the perspective is not all that accurate and still looks kind of uh, amateurish and the bodies are not really well uh, uh, well drawn or well painted. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that the artist during the Renaissance started focusing on is trying to get accurate perspective and, and representing the world as it was. So uh, shading. Uh, chiaroscuro is a style that was uh, developed by Leonardo da Vinci where it's the shading on an oval object that gives it depth. So a lot in your face and uh, hands and that kind of thing. You can see that in da Vinci's Mona Lisa on page 284 uh, where this is a, one of the more recognizable creations from Leonardo da Vinci and chiaroscuro is a very dominant part of this. Also balance and still looking at the Mona Lisa on page 284. Uh, she's placed in the center and the perspective looks uh, accurate and it looks like there's depth and there's uh, these mountains and trees in the background. And so the Renaissance artists were really starting to try to re represent the world accurately. On page 285, another Da Vinci uh, painting, The Last Supper, 
uh, you can see balance there where it you look and the whole painting seems like it's balanced as far as weight this perception of weight on either side of the table and the number of characters on each side with Jesus sitting in the center this was very important during the Renaissance um, and the exploration, like I was talking about church scary, but the exploration of light and dark and perspective and shading. These were all characteristics of, uh, of the Renaissance and what the artists were uh, trying to express. Um, on page 286, you have Michelangelo's David, and it's a sculpture that was starting to reflect. The Renaissance was still highly influenced by Greek and Roman mythology and uh, the idolization of man. But uh, the Renaissance artists were trying to come down a little more and be more human and correct. So even though David has this Greek uh, feature to him and this the perfect man, he's still trying to be accurate as far as representation, the human form. Um, another uh, uh, by Michelangelo is the creation of Adam on the next page. This is another uh, creation that uh, is recognized for that time. Raphael was an artist during this time. On page 289, um, Jan van Eyck is a painter that uh, was starting to explore and really look at uh, oil and the richness of oil uh, in painting. And um, so you got these deep, rich colors that are starting to emerge during the Renaissance. Um, okay, so let's see if there's um, the... And I think as far as what, what you need to know for your purposes, uh, balance and proportion, accurate perspective, exploring the use of light and dark. Those are the characteristics of the Renaissance, and the statement that goes along with it is alignment of ideals of learning, reason, and self-expression with religious dogma. That's the Renaissance. I'm going to keep moving along here. The next art period that I want to uh, expose you to is Baroque, which comes right after <clears throat> the Renaissance. And by the way, the Renaissance lasted 200 years. And I don't know if you remember me talking about that. Art periods lasted different periods of time, and there was different reasons for that. Uh, sometimes it was because of a new ideas, new ways of thinking that were emerging and people getting comfortable with that and, and, and bringing that into their life. Sometimes it was about events. Um, with the Baroque art period, <clears throat> which followed uh, the Renaissance, it still looks a lot like um, the Renaissance painting. They're very realistic, uh, really a lot of exploration of light and dark. Matter of fact, that's the distinction of the Baroque art period is that uh, the use of dramatic lighting. So the statement that I used for the Baroque art period, which was from 1590 to 1725, is that it was an extended eccentric redundancy and noisy abundance of details, which sharply contrasted the clear and sober rationality of the Renaissance. So that's a big sentence, a lot said there. Uh, let me just show you what that looks like. If you look on page uh, 294, you have the, uh, the raising of the cross by Peter Paul Rubens. Um, this is exactly what that statement talks about when it says eccentric redundancy and noisy abundance of details. Um, you look at that picture, there's a lot going on in that picture. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, raising that cross. So there's a, a eccentric, eccentric redundancy and noisy abundance of details. And um, the eccentric aspect might be the fact that Rubens felt like he needed to paint this uh, painting with all this going on, all that uh, depth and richness and detail. And then, of course, there's a dog in the bottom left-hand corner. That's the eccentric aspect of it. Um, I go back a step. Another uh, artist that's very well known during this or associated with the Baroque art period is Caravaggio. And on page uh, 292, you can see an example of what Caravaggio is really known for, and that's dramatic lighting. And the artists were really criticized during this time for using dramatic lighting because, as it um, implies, the light dramatizes the, the setting. So where the artists in the Renaissance were trying to accurately capture the world as it, it is and as it was, the Baroque artists are now taking the liberty to kind of play with it a little bit and tell the viewer what they should be looking at. And they do that with lighting. So in this case, because shading and lighting are visual elements that create the illusion of the art, by highlighting something and then taking away some details and making it darker, they 
make it where you focus and it emphasizes a certain area on the canvas and that's what the artist wants you to see. The Renaissance artist would have said, look, just put it all out there and let the, art, let the viewer focus on whatever they want. In uh, this, um, it's the conversion of St. Paul by Caravaggio and it's on page 292 in the top uh, right hand corner. You can see how not all the details are there and Caravaggio has highlighted what he wants you to look at uh, to tell the story that he's telling. Another thing during the Baroque art period is that they started focusing on common stories that uh, people knew. So at that time they would be Bible stories. Today, a Bible story might not be the most common story that everyone knows. Maybe the Kardashians are something that we all recognize more than a, a Bible story. But in this case, most of Caravaggio's work were uh, common themes that we knew from the, that were known from the Bible. And um, so, uh, let's see what else I have on here. Baroque. Um, yeah, I was hoping that the other Caravaggio, there's another Caravaggio uh, where he's chopping off Holofernes' head and uh, Judith chopping off Holofernes' head, another story from the Bible. Uh, it's interesting because there's three or four uh, well-known artists that have done that same story and, and a lot of them look very similar. Uh, but uh, illustrating these stories that um, that we know about but maybe hadn't seen anything that represented so the artist does that. Um, Overt emotional content, dramatic light, sensuous richness. So you can see uh, uh, Johannes Vermeer on page 296. This is a really great example of also uh, the emphasis of lighting and really uh, highlighting the areas that the artist wants you to see. Um, the kitchen uh, made on page 296. And I think that's all I want to say about Baroque. Um, Rembrandt was an artist during this time. Matter of fact, he had a whole series of um, self-portraits which are really dark. And I, in these pages I'm looking at, I don't see any, but you would recognize those. Um, Vermeer, Rubens, Bernini uh, had, was known for his uh, sculpture of David, which is not within these pages that I'm flipping in. But um, that's another artist, and of course Caravaggio. So those are your artists. Your statement, it was Baroque, 1590 to 1725. And then the final um, art period that I'd like to introduce you to for this particular lecture um, is Rococo. And Rococo uh, was from 1720 to 1760. And Rococo, once again, you can kind of see the progression of thinking and emphasis of the artist's uh, as we go from timeline to as we go from art period to art period on the timeline, Rococo is very similar to Baroque. It looks a lot like Baroque. It's getting it's moving away from Renaissance because it's becoming much more rich in color and uh, brighter. And um, matter of fact, the way that it's uh, the statement that I use for Rococo is that it was a light-hearted depiction of domestic life in upper-class homes. So really the emphasis, it, from moving from Baroque uh, to Rococo, the biggest shift is emphasis. And that's really what distinguishes the Rococo. So you have this frivolous, light-hearted um, depictions of life focused on uh, the upper class, the elite. Um, I have a playful and witty themes. And that's how we look at uh, Rococo. As a matter of fact, um, on page 301, it's one of my favorite paintings to reference for Rococo. It's perfect for this. Uh, as you look at it, uh, you have uh, this painting by Jean-Henri Fragonard, and uh, it's called The Happy Accident of the Swing. And I always enjoy the discussion around this, like, so what's going on here? And the way that you understand any kind of painting is you look at the title, you look at the artist, you look at the content within the painting, you look at the art period it was created, and all of that gives you insight into what you're looking at. So we would look at this painting knowing that it's during Rococo, that it's probably gonna be lighthearted, not a serious uh, subject matter. It's probably gonna be some rich people doing something that they would do every day. Uh, lighting is gonna be an important factor. It's coming straight from Baroque, and they're using that dramatic lighting effect. Um, 
And so, and Fragonard is, is the, reflects all these aspects of the Rococo. So, and then the title. So what does the title tell you? So you look at this and you're thinking, and I'm on page 301, you're looking, so what's going on here? And uh, like I said, I'm always amused because the class is kind of prude in this area. Like They're like, mm, I'm not sure what's going on. That's kind of crazy. Did the guy fall down or what's happening? The happy accident here, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, is that this gentleman is hidden behind the bushes looking up this lady's skirt, and she's okay with that. That's the happy accident. You have the gentleman back in the shadow who's swinging her, maybe your butler, maybe your husband. We don't know, but he's really not a part of this uh, little foray. And then you look at the, you start getting more insight and ideas about it as you look at the sculpture on the left side going, shh. And the, the little cherub angels at the on the ground looking at him going, what the heck is going on here? So, you know, this is it. This is Rococo. This is the perfect painting, the bright pink colors, the light coming through the leaves, the richness of it, the frivolous aspect of it, Rococo. So those are your three um, art periods that I wanted to do a quick drive-by on today. Um, you have the quiz that asks you three questions about these three art periods. Make sure and do that. Um, I'll have those posted uh, hopefully by the end of today. And also be sure uh, I'll post the uh, final exam because I want you to be working on that as we go along. But uh, I answered uh, a lot of questions as far as that today and what I talked about. So you guys have a great week. I uh, hope you're having fun with this. And uh, I will see you.